thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction of uh, the ECA API transition, which is what I think we are all here. And we will open for questions part in, in the second part of, of this webinar. Uh, I think we will get really quickly to that second part. Um, and just to say, like, uh, I think the objective of, of this uh, short webinar is to help everybody to to transition to this the the newer the newer APIs in data site uh, and leave the old the old uh, the APIs that we were using back a few years ago. Uh, hopefully, we are you are not in the very very last group, and we can get you to transition uh, faster and more comfortable, comfortably to a new API. Um, a little bit of background, and I think everybody is aware of this. Uh, we are talking about the EC API, and this API was developed uh, in a few years ago already, and it was developed mostly with the objective of be a temporary solution to assist members uh, from the service from the California Digital Library called ECID. And we implemented this API to, to help the transition to them to become data site members. Uh, and this API was mirroring exactly the ECID service. Uh, it has been up and running for up to for four years now. And we have been planning to actually deprecate the service by the end of this year, 2021. There was a a newsletter released early in January this year to actually mention that. And also at the end of this month, early of September, we are planning to discontinue the test service uh, for the ECA, ECA API as well. I mean, we want to transition first, uh, everybody that is probably using the test service, and then at the end of the year, completely close the, uh, the service uh, for the whole ECA, ECA API. And what we have been recommending everybody since then and actually, since the, this whole transition started four years ago, was to move to, to the REST API. Nothing for that. Uh, before I move on to the next part of this, uh, I would like just to make a quick polling question um, for everybody just here in the call to see uh, if you have started your transition already to REST API or not. And it's just to, to get an idea of the people present here and probably the questions that will come up later. If you have already started it or you're still waiting for it. So I think I have like four people. Yeah. Okay. So I can uh, and share the results. I think we have a split group. Half of the group has started this transition and the other half has not. Uh, so it's good. Uh, we can discuss the questions that people might have uh, and, 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 and continue uh, with that. But it's good that we have a mixed group. So probably we have mixed questions at the end. Uh, and I think I'm going to close that there. Um, the next thing that uh, obviously we are suggesting all of members to move to the ROS API. And we want to talk a little bit to mention some of the advantages that I will bring to you as a service. Um, it provides uh, one of those, those advantages that provides a better service uh, in terms of performance and Availability. Uh, the REST API provides a split service, and I, I put a link to one of the blog posts. We actually released this API. If you use the, API, the REST API with your credentials, you need to have an exclusive uh, server directly only for members. While if you just, you just use your credentials, which is the large majority of your set of REST API, to go to a separate service. So, I mean, immediately when you are using your credentials, you get better performance and better speed about everything that it has to do, provided that you use your, your credentials, that only happens with the, REST, with the REST API. Also, it allows, it has some features that other, the other APIs that we have don't have. For example, it allows you to retrieve metadata in multiple ways. You can retrieve samples of the UIs. If you, for some reason, want to sample the UIs that you have created, you can uh, actually retrieve one single DUI with all their metadata, multiple DUIs, in, in when you make a request for multiple items, but you also make, can uh, take advantage of all the query language that we have to add to, to search and query the API. So it's not something, it's not only that you can get all the resources that are related to you, but you can actually filter the resources and have different ways to integrate it. 
Another advantage of this API is that you can also auto-generate UI names. Uh, if for some reason you decide, like, I don't want to spend time actually uh, typing names for the DUIs, I mean, the DUI name, you can actually set the API to actually, you know, give me a random string and that will gen that the API will always generate a random string for that, for that uh, DUI, and you can automate that with all the API. Another advantage is also that allows you update the UI metadata per attribute. So in pre all the other APIs that we have that you have access, to, like the EC API, you have to sell a full document when you want to make a metadata update. But with the Redis API, you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to sell absolutely all the attributes. If you solely want to uh, update one single attribute, you can do that. You can change one single attribute, for example, resource type or any other other attribute that you want to update, you can do that. And this is a feature that only works in this API. Uh, additional to that, uh, as you might be aware, we we are uh, based on many other initiatives that we are involved. We uh, we are collecting citations and usage of the DOIs that being views and downloads. And the REST API has exclusive, well, uh, specific aggregations for this. So you can see the number of counts of citations that a DOI has, or the, or the resource represented by the DOI has, of or the usage counts by a resource. Um, and the, probably the most important thing, and this is why we are bringing everybody here, it gets the REST API gets consolidated with the newest features developed by DataSite. Any of all the other APIs that we have access, access uh, do you have access to, and specifically the, rest, the EC, EC API, we are not updating them anymore. Practically, no new features we are agreeing to that one. The only, uh, only API that gets new features include, uh, included is the REST API. So these uh, six items are probably where I would tell you they are the main advantages that you have while migrating to this API. It will help you to actually do more with our service. At the same time, um, I want to spend a little bit of time just to mention some of the, I don't want to say myths, but there are some myths about using the REST API that we have seen in our support messages. And I just want to demystify that. So it's like, oh, this is not true. Uh, and some of the things that we have asked, oh, well, you know, it is more complicated to use. And I can tell that that's totally false. I mean, we also work in development and we use APIs all the time. Um, and creating the REST API, using the REST API to create the UIs, it works in a very similar fashion that using ECAP, EC API. You practically require the same amount of uh, REST, the HTTP calls, and use practically the same protocols. There is no nothing uh, particularly new about it. Another thing that we have heard and people kind of be worried is that if you have to change credentials, and again, this is totally false, you can use exactly the same credentials that you have used always, the same credentials that you use for Fabrica in case of you use Fabrica to mean DOI, so your, the administration of your repository, and the same credentials you use in the Paris API, that will work transparently in this, in this for this new service. And we have also heard that people say, okay, well, I cannot send an XML payload and I can say that it's also false. Uh, you can still sell, send uh, XML uh, documents. Uh, you just have to encode them in, in a way that the API, the REST API can see them. So this has to be encoded. And I think like all of you that have been using EC API, EC API you were already encoding your, your XML payloads, but the encoding is a little bit different in the, in the REST API, but you can still do that. And and I think practically that's the introduction of this. I would like to open for questions. And I think that I, 